new team in the league, Monster Rugby Gaming has just entered the NLC and was instantly inserted in the conversation of winning it all. Monster Rugby Gaming might be new here, but don't be fooled because they're not coming in as rookies. They want to establish themselves as the next big organization that pumps out incredibly talented players who are ready for the big stages. It's a long journey to achieve the goal and their road so far has been bumpy. Many questions were raised about their performances, specifically versus Barraz and even Eminem. Are they going to struggle again? Or is this guy gonna pop off on a lease? and not allow his opponents to play the game. Maxler is a key player for Monster. He's not just a connecting link between his teammates, he's a guy who motivates them and leads by example. He's not just a leader, he's the voice of Monster. A player who has tasted what success feels like, who stood tall among the likes of former world champions SKTT1 and Faker, and almost took them down at Worlds 2017. And after that, silence. A couple of not so great splits with misfits and I'll back on an ERL. But as a veteran, he's learned what it's like to fall down and get back up stronger because the goal was, is and will be the same for Maxler, to be the best player in the world. But don't forget, to be the best, you have to beat the best. And Fnatic Ryzen has proven to be just that, one of the most well-known and established esports organizations now breezing their way through the NLC undefeated with a very impressive 6-0 record. Fnatic don't just beat their opponents, they run them down. Their fast-paced, proactive playstyle that forces their opponents to make a split-second decision has put them solid at the top of the table, and Dan plays a big part in that success. With multiple years of experience in the ER realms, he doesn't just thrive to be the best version of himself, but to get the most out of his teammates. He's not just a shot caller, he's a natural leader. He's the guy who's not afraid of taking risks. Dan has consistently been finding leads in every single game, translating them into snowballing victories. The guy gets ahead, he stays ahead. Dan almost made it to the main stage and then self-made took over. And yet he's still hungry to prove that he belongs up there among the greats. But is he ready? Can he do it? Well, what you need? Frontline? Late game scaling? Maybe some early gags or a surprise? He can do it all. Dan has the whole package and it's his time to prove that he is the best EU has to offer. This is Monster Rugby Gaming versus Fnatic Ryzen. Really nice actually hearing from Trouble on that. Even though she's not here on the desk with us, she's still going to join us with a bit of a breakdown in coming into our second game between Monster and Fnatic Rising. Big dive there into the jungle matchup. How are we feeling about this, Goldborg? I know, I know you've, you're quite excited to talk about uh, Max Law and Dan in the jungle. Yeah, and I just want to touch of what she spoke about Dan here in the ending too. How him being a jungler that's able to take risk. Yeah, but Dan is also a jungler that with these risks are just gaining so much advantage to himself and in the end for his team. We've always spoken about Dan as one of these junglers who had such an intelligent pathing, but that intelligence wasn't rewarded in the earlier seasons. It is now when the meta is so jungle focused and Dan is just able to bring it over to the ball to his court. And to quote Swain, right, a calculated risk, it's not a risk at all. And that is how Dan plays. He's so intelligent with everything he does. Yeah, I actually kind of want to elaborate on something that Trouble was touching. I think she, she painted this picture so perfectly of Max Law, you know. Just a few years ago, he almost beat SKT. He almost beat the best team in the world in a best of five series. And now he finds himself... Not struggling, but not exactly excelling in in, in an ERL. Um, you know, this is a, a big climb back to the top for Max Law. Uh, and if he wants to prove that he is still the player that he used to be, he's still one of the best junglers in Europe. He's still one of the most exciting European talents. He's got quite a bit of work to get there. And this is the first hurdle that he needs to cross. And I think particularly in this specific game, he has his work cut out for him because what we see from Dan is tends to be a more farm intensive jungler who's happy to scale up. He's confident in his laners. He's confident that the likes of Matty and Magi Felix can carry him in the late game in those team fights. And as a result, the pressure is much more on Max Law. We've seen him have a very much more selfless style of play. And if you can't execute on that, you end up falling massively behind. So Max Law, his bot lane often plays a very aggressive style. We've seen them frequently lean on the likes of the Callista, the likes of the Nautilus. If you don't 
don't snowball that, you're going to struggle. And then also looking towards the mid lane, if you don't set up Sebex to be able to roam down bot, you're not going to be able to execute on your early game win conditions. So I think even ignoring the, the what I perceive to be a bit of a skill gap in favor of Dan right now and the meta being more favored to him, I think Max does a much harder job in this game. Well, coming into this season, everybody thought that Munster were the team that were going to show us that gods can bleed and take out these academy teams. Fnatic haven't been able to drop a single game so far. Not been able, they've not dropped a single game here in the NLC. We are going to cut to a quick break, and when we're back, we'll be back with champ select between Munster and Fnatic. We'll see you in a second. Hello and welcome back as we're getting ready to go in to Champ Select for game number two. Munster versus Fnatic. Munster on the blue side, Fnatic on the red. See what Munster want to ban away here from Fnatic. So far, taking their time. 
Yeah, Munster have been one of those teams who's got heavy priority onto the Callista, so you could probably expect the Twisted Faith fan, uh, which would indicate that they might hover towards that one. But we do also have the likes of Ash in this meta, so they could just vanish with that pick too. But I think it's just instrumental. We didn't really get to mention this in the pregame, but Munster is that kind of team that was made not only to win the NLC, but to win EU Masters. And we've just haven't seen that for them yet. I think a lot of it has come down to how complex the draft was too. So I'm looking for them to get way more simple and to create an easy to play style for them. Yeah, I think they've often landed on these really difficult to execute early wing conditions. We see things like the Clister. We see often mid laners are looking to roam down towards bot when it was like the situation the Annie. And even though they have been able to make those work with a bit of a boss early game, it shouldn't necessarily be the wing condition if you're struggling to execute. Now, we've also seen them flourish when they've been playing around that, when they've been able to find a really decisive early game and crush the enemy team. But I think it's a struggle to find that lead against Fnatic. And honestly, I feel like they maybe would have a better time looking through the solo laners. We have Sebex who's been arguably the best performer on the monster roster we also have shikari who has shown that he can find opportunities to be a real threat in the top lane on things like the gangplank and i think for Fnatic, magi felix has looked a little bit off so far this split seeing him get solo killed uh, against barrage was a bit of a question mark and pride has always been a bit hit or miss for me on the roster I actually kind of want to elaborate on your Shikari point here, Orcs. I genuinely believe that there is a real advantage or a real opportunity here to exploit top lane. I think Pride has been the shakiest member for quite some time on Fnatic, to be completely honest with you. I think Shikari has always been one of the most consistent and best performing top laners in, in you know ERLs across the board. I think Sebex can very easily in a comfortable matchup go toe to toe with Amachi Felix. So I, I, I do agree with you. I think this could be a solo lane game for, for um, monster if they want to get some serious advantages. Well, it looks like we are now back into champs to let the Ash and the Calf has been taken away. Fnatic obviously taking away the Calfs on the red side, showing that they do respect that Munster might go to pick it up, but there's the Karma ban coming out from Munster. And now Fnatic looking for a final ban. I'm just thinking about what kind of AD carries are left open. Like you said, the Callista has been something that Munster have lent on. The Syndra has been banned away, and it could just be a Callista we might see come through now. Yeah, I think Syndra makes sense here because the picks that stand out to me as being left open are Volibear, Set, and Syndra. If you ban away Volibear or Set, they can take the other. And then also you're left in a situation where they've been able to pick up the Syndra. And it looks like here, Munster might just be trading them off again. They know Fnatic isn't going to take both Volibear and Set. It means you're still able to pick up one of them. And they're prioritizing the Azir instead. Something that gives Sebex priority in the mid lane, allows him to have a bit more control of the map and facilitate uh, Max Law, and also a really strong scaling pick. So if they don't completely execute on their really win conditions, they still have something to fall back on. Yeah, I'm just thinking about what's left open as Orc set. Yeah, we good, got some bans coming through here. Syndra Carthus, and that does leave open the volley bed too. Now, if you want to look down to the AP, AD carry pull, Ash got removed. There's still the Aphelius, who's, who's not really seen much play, but is still up there and available if you want to go for an AD carry like that. So if they do not look to secure that, or that one on next Matty, it's going to be curious to see what they have, will have as a priority on the other side. We have started to see some Kaiser going into it as well, but it's going to be interesting to see what's going to end up happening. You can pick this because Twisted Faith will not be picked since they picked the Astia uh, as a first pick on Monster Rugby Gaming. Yeah, this actually strikes me as uh, very interesting for Fnatic because obviously most people point towards Monster Rugby Gaming's bot lane as being the strongest part of their roster. This is Fnatic sending a message. If you play a Callista lane, you're not playing to play passive. You're not playing to not look for a 2v2. You're playing Ooh. to dominate the lane. And this is a big, big move from, for, from Ex Matty to uh, really just take the fight directly to Unforgiven and Heaver in the bot lane. But it seems like they're ready. They instantly have the response. We've seen Unforgiven play the Draven before. Not hugely successful, but here into the Callista, you just completely outpace it in the trades. One axe means Callista's trying to get several autos before she can rend off. And obviously, once you get that Bloodthirster, the 1v1s, even the 2v2s become extremely hard. And Nautilus is a great pickup here to be able to lock down that Callista and provide a lot of issues. The thing is, the game just became a lot more easier as well for Max Law too, since you're gonna just have heavily priority onto this Draven against the Callista too. And as, as Orcs, Orcs just mentioned, he's gonna be outpacing this Callista. If he does get a lead, that outpacing is gonna continue throughout the game too. So it needs to come down to the rest of the map. We know that most likely this Volibear is going towards the jungle. So maybe we're gonna see Dan playing a bit more selfless toward one of his laners that he needs to get ahead. Because there's a lot of early game invested into this Callista already. 
Okay, I feel like going in the next ban phase for Fnatic, it's looking at the junglers, the options that Maxwell can bring. For Munster, I think you look mid lane. You want to shut down any mid laners that potentially can sway the bot lane matchup further in their favor. Or alternatively, mid laners like Corky that potentially can be a big scaling option. Galio is the former. You definitely don't want to be playing around a Raven bot lane and suddenly have the Galio fly in and make things really difficult. Well, what do they want to take away next here? So it looks like Fnatic with the Trundle ban, now looking for their final ban. Curious to see what they do. I actually like the answer they've got with obviously this Leona. We've seen Bravado kind of default to the Leona a little bit this season, especially when the Tarek's been taken off the board, which is typically been something we've seen a fair amount here. Looks like the Graves is going to be the final ban from Fnatic. We're going to fit out onto that jungle pool. And before the before this game started, we did have a bit of a, a, a bit of a chat about the Max Law versus Dan matchup. So Jungle Pool getting thinned out pretty heavily now. I'm curious to see what they want to go for. Yeah, I think the options to me that, that speak out are the likes of the Corky, which Magi Felix is really strong on. You can play around the package timings. The TF potentially could also be something you're a bit concerned about, even though up against the Azir, you are a little bit short of range in that regard. But they're looking instead the Orianna. Again, another one of those scaling picks. You have great engage to set it up and what does match the priority to a degree against that Azir. I honestly would love for there to come in with a Kindred pick from the from the side of Monster Rugby Gaming. There's a lot of engage coming from the side of Fnatic Rising and they really just want to go all in with the pick composition. You need to blind pick your top lane or at least that's what we think so far here, right? So therefore you can just get a weak side top laner on still up and available if you really want to get to play for your backline, which potentially could be a Kindred Draven and this Aseer. So let's see what pans out here. Yeah, it's a little bit concerning seeing the TF. Honestly, I feel like Gangplank could be a good pick here for Fnatic. We know, uh, uh, sorry, for Monster. We know Shikari is really comfortable on it. Offers you a bit of that global element to match the enemy team. Uh, but I feel like you want something with early power for Max Law in this situation. You want something that can skirmish well, because with the composition for Fnatic already, you're going to have skirmishes, and Olaf perfectly suits that. Yeah, just that. You were going through it. It just, it, it, the coin fell perfect on your point there. It's just like, they need some early skirmish. Boom, that's the Olaf pick coming in hot here. I think it's going to be interesting because now you're looking for both teams. One team wants to skirmish through this Callista, but the rest of the map just seems to be so much better in the early game with the Olaf, with the Draven. And now you got a pretty good weak sider in this Gangplank, which you don't really, you can still play through Gangplank individually. He's still a strong early game champion, specifically with his grasp with the Undying on his parlay too. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they will play out this game, but early game action must be delivered here. I was wondering oh. whether or not we're going to see the Volibear flex. And it looks like that actually might just be the game plan. They put up the Vladimir to go in the top lane for Pride. So Volibear was obviously going to get flexed into the jungle. And okay, talk to me a little bit. I want to I want to get your, your thoughts on the draft. Who do you think actually won draft faiths here at Scoundrel? Uh, uh, it's difficult to tell. Um, personally, I'm in favor of Munster. I think they have an overall more easily executable draft. You're kind of shutting down the Callista with the Draven in the bottom side of the map, which is one of the big early game win conditions. But one thing, one thing that we always talk about when it comes to playing a Callista composition is that, that you know you you don't often have a late game get out clause. Well, actually, by adding in the Vladimir, you've given yourself a late game get out clause. My only query with the Vladimir is that you know if if Shikari starts to get ahead and puts pressure on them and they don't get an advantage to. Do Callista, Fnatic might not actually get into this game, and it might be too it might be too little too late for Vladimir to get in and, and be impactful. That's my only qualm when looking at the Fnatic composition. But I I, I do think overall I genuinely think uh, Munster won the draft. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. I think they have a lot of tools to sort of facilitate this one. I think there's more pressure on Fnatic in this game, which is often a bit different from what we see in Monster Games, where they're the ones with the pressure. You really want to be playing around this Callista. You want to be playing around the TF's early pressure. And although they do have that lane game condition off the Vladimir, it is going to take a little bit longer before he's being a huge backline threat. But it does fall into what they want to do. As Goldbrook said earlier, they're looking to dive that backline and be a threat. Vladimir, beautiful for that. TF, Leona, and that uh, Volibear, all massive threats. So if they can find angles to attack this backline, even if the early game hasn't been perfect, they can still potentially look to punish them. 
And you know, the reason why we're saying that is looking struggling for Fnatic here is because of the Callista pick. Had this been an Estrel for X, Massey would have been like, okay, this actually looks like a standard Fnatic draft. We've seen multiple times how they will play around the Bolivar, how they will play around the Twisted Faith. Have we seen pride with this Vladimir? And honestly, you can say what you want. You can say that Monsters draft is easier to play, which I do believe, especially in the early game. But this is exactly how Fnatic wants to play. It's how we've seen them play. And they just like to play for the late game. We've seen them do it well. So yeah, it's harder to execute but it's something that Fnatic can pull off. Something I'm actually curious about is, could we see a swap between mid and top lane? Because Fnatic have historically done this quite a bit, and it'll be a human swap, so they put Magi Felix up top lane on the Azir, and they put uh, Shikari in the mid lane on the Twisted Fate, because obviously you pick the Vladimir specifically, so you have a good matchup into the Gangplank. He's not as good into those range, match range matchups, and you can never really harass the Vladimir out. If you put it that way around, the threat from the TF is very low, because you have the Oranges, the uh, Azir does actually put a lot of harass down onto the Vladimir, and can make his life very difficult. My only question about it would be the mid priority wouldn't be as strong. So maybe not a thing, but we'll see when it gets into it, if they do opt to change things up. I know that Fnatic have done that in the past. Yeah, uh, I think it's more likely that we see Fnatic instigate than obviously than, than, than Monster, especially because we have Sebex running cleanse and we, he's definitely going to be staying on the mid side of the map there. Um, for me, this... I feel like I'm going to be keeping eyes specifically on Max Law. You know, in the early game, is he going to work with that Draven Nautilus bot lane? It's a huge kill bot lane. You're a slightly shorter range uh, Callista. I think that's probably where I'm going to be. I'm going to be focusing my attention when it comes to when it comes to the early game here. And I think Max Law, this is his chance to step up. You know, this is his chance to really take the reins and drive Monster Rugby Gaming to a victory. Because when we saw Monster Rugby Gaming dominate, it was through a bot lane centric Max Law comboing with Unforgiven. Uh, and, and Heva, and they completely crushed early game through bot lane. And that's, I think, the where the win condition is going to come from uh, for Monster Rugby Gaming this game. I just want to quickly say, I got the names mixed up, obviously not having the draft in front. I meant a swap for Monster, so they'd put the Vladimir again, uh, they'd put the Azir against the Vladimir, then they'd put the GP against the TF. So, yeah, just got a little bit mixed up, but that was the point I was making. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I knew, and I was just like, oh, I'm just going just gonna to pretend like we're going on. Yeah, it's fine. We, we all knew <laughs> I, what you meant, don't I worry. I think we all knew what you meant, yeah, exactly. I think that, as a viewer, we need to keep eyes on the early game, especially because we got an Olaf. Are we going to see a Lady Invade, the 125 Donuts Classic coming in here? You got a Draven too, so follow it up. So I think it's going to be interesting because we've already seen Monster be that kind of team that would pull out a heavy level 3 dive, try to do some crazy things in the early game. So I'm curious to see, are we going to see more of that kind of Monster that just wants to flip the, girl, the game from the early game already? Yeah, what's interesting to me about this draft in general is that we've got Magi Felix and the Twisted Fate. And Magi Felix has never really been a mid laner that has like hugely looked to roam before. He's always been kind of like a, a, a mid laner that plays for lane the majority of the time. He's an incredible 1v1 mid laner, you know, in most senses. Um, but we don't often see him in situations where he's roaming a lot because he, he's usually like a hyper farmer and just gets incredibly fed just through farm for the most part. So him on Twisted Fate is going to be a bit more of a, a stretch of the playstyle that I've seen from Magi Felix in the past. And he's going to have to have like impact this game. This is this is going to be a game that centers around the ability for Dan and Magic Felix to link up and influence that bot side of the map. Because realistically, you're probably leaving Vladimir on an island for the most part. Um, it's all going to be, you know, bot map center focused. And I think this is going to be a big game for Magic Felix to really kind of stretch what we've seen from him before. I think something that's interesting to me about the Magi Felix Twisted Fate discussion is I remember when he got the five counts in Top Town Challenger. Everyone's talked about it countless times a while ago. But I remember him being asked questions about that. And one thing that he found really successful in solo queue was that he would leave lane and he would just go into the fog of war. You know, maybe he'd farm a camp, uh, the Raptors or something. He'd get a little bit of vision. But ultimately, it's just a threat. I think that's a critical thing around the TF is that the threat of the Destiny can be more effectively than just using the Destiny itself. And I think that's something that Magic Felix really does understand. And he's shown with his success in solo queue that just offering that pressure without committing to a play that might or might not go your way can often change how the enemy team plays. And that can be a big factor here. Anytime Magic Felix leaves lane, we're undoubtedly going to see Munster have to back off and go, right, respect the Twisted Fate. Well, there's been a lot of build-up leading into this game, but we're going to get ready to pass it over to our casters, Medic and Trouble. Thank you very much, Hipra. I'm really looking forward to this one. I, I've been doing some maths, and I'm 90% okay. sure, 90% sure, Trouble, okay. that if Munster win this game, mm -hmm. both Munster and Tricked qualify to playoffs. Because I'm pretty sure Dusty and Barrage still have a game to play against each other, which means neither of those teams 
would be able to then catch up with the people ahead of them, or only one of them would. So we'd have four teams qualifying from the group. So if my maths is correct, it's actually a super, super exciting game. If my maths is correct, this is going to be an absolute bloodbath from the yeah. cakes that we've seen so far. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I think we have a lot of uh, action in the bottom lane. They talked about it a lot in the analyst desk segment, but when you see like, Magi Felix on Twisted Fate, when you see Draven Nautilus against Callista Leona, like it's gonna it's gonna be incredibly exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. I think uh, I the the dynamics of draft around bot lane was super interesting to me because you had like the Callista picked early on. It's like, okay, we'll counter that with the Draven. We'll pick Nautilus because it's a really strong bot lane, but then Leona kind of soft counters Nautilus or is good into Nautilus because you just E through him to his AD carry, right? Nautilus can't stop the Leona from Zenith blading in. So it's this really cool mechanics. And I'm actually quite excited as well to see uh, Fnatic Rising deciding not to take heal in the bottom lane. They've gone for the exhaust ignite combo and then Monster Rugby oh. game have gone for cleanse exhaust. So there's a little bit less aggressiveness from their summoners, but oh, I'm just, oh, I love bot lane matchups. It's super cool. I mean, we, I don't think necessarily we have seen any of these in the NLC where, sure, we know Unforgiven likes to play, you know, the very aggressive champions like Kalistas, like Dravens, but none of the teams have actually gone head to head. And seeing the two highlighted teams being so eager to basically win lane and win game is just something that we haven't seen before in the NLC. Usually, like, one of the two will back off and be, all right, all right. We'll just try to persevere the laning phase, you know, sweat but persevere and get to the late game. This is not the case here. No. This is one of those games where if you fall behind, you are pretty donezo. Although both teams have scaling elements, you know, Vladimir for Pride, Twisted Fate works well in the late game as well. Uh, Azir uh, and the Gangplank are pretty good scalers, but those bot lanes are all about getting ahead as quickly as you can. And here comes the early invade, Heaver looking for something. The red card locked in from Magic Felix, and the slow on Bravado might be enough for a hook here. Just dodges out from the side. Perhaps a little bit of a collapse here. You can see Pride coming down from the top lane. Magic Felix once again locks in red, gets some damage off over the entire team down towards the bottom side. Mad uh, X Matty is waiting in the wing. Fnatic having none of this. This is fight. Like, we're, we're just gonna get action this entire game. It's a 5v5 level one. Heaver flashes forward. Magic Phoenix able to flash away, but then goes the hook on the Bravado. X Maddie from behind, putting the spears into the back of Monster Rugby Gaming, and they immediately realize they want no piece of this. They've gone into hell, and hell has bitten back. X Maddie with the first kill of the fight. Magic Phoenix locked in blue for some reason. Could have had red, but Unforgiven's gonna fall as oh. well as X Maddie takes down his opposite man. <laughs> Um, win lane, win game, went into a situation of win level one in a random skirmish in the jungle, so win done. game. It is Ex so Mati, done. Two kills and the lane hasn't even begun yet. The man hasn't even got back to base to cash in on that well-earned gold. That was so disastrous by Monster. They got the first, you know, invade into Fnatic's jungle. And then that was a great dodge by Bravado right there to just stop completely and dissuade the situation. And then, oh, Kiva. Whoo. Okay. Yep. And then yep. Kiva, as I mentioned, still wanted to go in. Monster was given the call that they wanted to invade. And I get it, you know, Olaf is really strong because the lower he gets, the stronger he is. Unforgiven, level one axes are extremely, extremely uh, strong. And also you've got so many dunks on the head by the Nautilus that you can pretty much root the entire team. But they didn't account for the rant and X Mati. Whoa. Yeah, he's just, just going straight for the call. He's like, yeah, see you on the other side, guys. I mean, I, I will be honest. The call is a little bit weak source for me. I, I was, you know what? I was looking forward to a Doran's Blade. I yeah. was looking forward to, you know, Vampiric Scepter or something. He's gone Carl Longsword. I understand why he's done it. And I oh, like, come on. He, he'll be really strong in the lane and he'll get he'll get even stronger and scale up even better. But you got a bounty at level one, mate. Come on, just get us double door. And says Ping is coming down towards the bottom lane as Max Law has cleared his camps and he's looking for a gank. The flash still available for X Maddy and the exhaust and the ignite. Bravado doesn't have a flash of his own and is going to step forward into Max Law here. But because of the way he positioned him, because of his bot lane positioning, Fnatic now know that Olaf is in waiting. And here comes Dan down from his oh, move up as well. 
We're doing it again. Sebex is on his way across. The flash in from Dan. They're looking for Maxwell straight away, but Dan is able to survive. Maxwell goes down. Unforgiven cleanses away the exhaust. Heaver's next on the menu as Magic Felix joins the fray. 3v2 now in the jungle. This blue buff has not been kind oh. to Forgiven. X Maddie has six kills. Oh, five kills. Five kills before five minutes in this game, and it's done. Just FF. Just, just call it. Remake. <laughs> this is this is so over. I was about to say, at the way to the point, do you say, okay, go next? Because I'm pretty sure if that was a scream, if at three minutes, 50 seconds, you had a five and zero Callista, at what point does Mazda say, okay, guys, we tried at least, but... I just don't understand. I get it. You want dominance. You're playing for the dominance. You need the early kills onto your Draven, and Alpha Given was lucky enough to cash in on one. Fine. Fair enough. But don't push your luck. Oh, yeah, Shikari's Pride pushing might... his luck. It looks to be okay. Pride's going to get forced away there. I think he's got nullifying orb on the uh, Vladimir. Saw a little mm. shield pop up on him. I, it's not, I don't know Vladimir runes that well, so it could be common that you go it maybe into Corrupting Potion because of the magic damage. It gives you that little bit of a shield and you avoid some of the tick. Or is Trial by Fire magic damage as well? No, it's true damage. So anyway, he's definitely got Nullifying Orb and uh, it helped him out a little bit in that trade. Uh, Shikari has backed, has already teleported into this lane, so he's going to lose out on a bit of CS. Heaver. And here we go. Heaver has exhaust. Heaver has exhaust. Maybe they can turn this one around. X Maddie didn't they realize can't. that Heaver had the exhaust, but now he flashes away, still has the red buff, still has the blue, can put the spears into Unforgiven here. Unforgiven stunned up by Bravado, but those axes are doing a little bit of damage. The hook <gasps> hits only onto X Maddie, actually. I thought it was Bravado, but X Maddie is a down and forgiven. It gets the shutdown. 500 gold in his back pocket now. And perhaps it wasn't as done as I thought. Maxwell here for the chase. Sebex off towards the top side. Could go in, but decides against it. Just wants to force Bravado and Dan away from the river because Maxwell is starting up that Ocean Dragon. He even needs to be a little bit cautious. He's only got 100 HP. He's a he's bit of a sad about it. Yeah. He's both sad and angry at the same time. Destiny coming in. Heaver immediately lands the hook and Unforgiven is going to open up the axis. Magic Felix trying to get away. Good stun from Bravado as he blasts turned into the fight. And here comes like Maddie. Bravado's going to go down. The smite was secured. I believe Maxwell got that. Dan's going to fall as well. And now it's all on Magic Felix and next Maddie. But you're just giving kills over to this Callista. Unforgiven almost gets the damage onto Magic Felix. The red buff not going to be enough. The corrupting potion is dropped. And there's the kill for Magic Felix. It's just bloodbath here, Trouble. You called it correctly. Kill after kill after kill. You know what? After I myself hyped up this specific game, there's nothing less than I would like to see than 13 kills six minutes into the game. We've got more than two kills per minute at this point. And you know what? Hmm. You know what? I'll, I'll wait until we see that because Eva has been playing this like out of his mind well all this time. Sure, it went south, but right here, Unforgiven is untouched and he's able to pop down axe after axe. Now, this is a mistake, right? They want to turn onto the Volibear and Magic Felix pops the Hourglass and is able to heal through his potion right there. Had they focused him instantly, I think that the Twisted Fade would have gone down. Now, the problem is, sure, if, if you look at the items in the bot lane, you've got a pickaxe, a BF sword and a bump scepter on to the Draven. He's stronger than the Kalista at this point. He's stronger than X Mati. If Heva gets one hook, one anchor into X Mati's face, they can take him down. Now the problem has moved to another lane. So you eliminate the problem from one lane, which was bot, and then you put it into the mid lane. Because Mati Felix suddenly has three kills and four assists and he's almost on his run of ages, while Sebex is sitting right there with his little amplifying tone, trying to read the manual instructions as in what to do <laughs> and how is this Twisted Fate so fed? Oh God, it's just it's so crazy to watch this game so far. It's like, as you said, like, Unforgiven's actually got himself into a, a pretty good spot here. I'd love to see what the gold comparison is in that bot lane now, because it's got to be pretty even. Yeah, 300 gold ahead for Unforgiven because of the shutdown. Sebek's going to try and get in here. The red card was locked for Magic Felix, so he isn't able to stun the Azir underneath the tower. Mid lane, look at that discrepancy uh, trouble. 1,600 gold lead for Magic Felix. He is in such a good spot. Yeah. So Sebex needs to be held by his jungler right here to try and crash in the way because he needs to take that back and reset for himself. Uh, Magic Felix is not having none of that, you know. He's almost on his road of ages. He's fine to stay in his lane for as long as he needs until the item is completed. They actually want to priority to start Shelly 
But I feel like the Fnatic duo is much stronger at this point. I'd agree with you. The only thing I'm thinking is Shikari can come down just that little bit early. You see Pride coming across. There's a level 6 to a level 5. Everyone so is piling. Max Law has a better smite in this trade, but Stavix tries to put some soldiers down. Both the bot lanes running up the river as rapidly as they can. It's like, guys, 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 we heard there were kills. We heard there were kills. We need to come across for this action. And actually, Monster Rugby Gaming will have the advantage on this. They're setting up the line of scrimmage, trying to force Fnatic rising back. He even misses the hook. I actually feel it's going to clear out this wave in the mid lane, and I believe Fnatic Rising have just given up this Rift Hell. They'll accept it for now. Matt X Maddie's going to try and get a plate in the bottom lane, or maybe two if he can. Of course, Callista not the quickest at taking towers, but he should be able to get at least one plate out of this. And with the t oh, good TP actually from Shikari. Could have cannibalized as well the wave. I just looked, and his ultimate was available, but instead. Just TP's uh -oh. down here and should Luke be able to down. stop next Matty. The Destiny coming in. Shikari pops Cannon Brush, trying to clear out the wave. They're the oranges to get rid of the stun card, but Shikari just locked underneath the tower. Nowhere to go. No friends to save him, and Bravado will survive the turret shot. And Fnatic Rising were ready for that play. Oh. Yeah, you can see the Observer there was like, I'm just gonna, whoa, okay, Twisted Face tanking up a tower shot. You saw the little <laughs> rapid movement. I was a little bit surprised he tanked it up as well, but was still able to survive. Monster Rugby Gaming trying to do something on the top side of the map. Remember, they do have the Rift Hole, so yep. if they can take another plate here, get it down to just three remaining, they should actually be able to take this whole tower. And I like I like the movement here about Monster Rugby Gaming. They know that they're behind in gold. They know that they're behind in items and strength. So they pull the bodies all up to the top side river to try and secure some more gold. We talked about the bot lanes. We're like, these guys need to get fed. The Kalista has more kills on her. But now Unforgiven is casting in on so many early game turret platings as well as the first tower. So this Draven going back to base, he should have whichever one he wants first, whether it's the Infinity Edge or the Bloodthirster. I would assume that he will go for the Bloodthirster first, just so he can have a little bit more skirmish power due to the fact that Fnatic is that much stronger at this point. Yeah. It's a good call, Trouble. I was thinking Infinity Edge. I thought he'd just want to fight it out. You know, we've seen so many fights. I was like, he just wants the crit. Just wants to go full Tyler 1 on these guys, but the Bloodthirster, hey, as you say, apparently. Yeah, Bloodthirster does give you a lot more sustain in the fights. It means it's harder for you just to get locked down by a Callista, by a Volibear, by a Twisted Fate, and second dragon in the game is going to spawn. Monster Rugby Gaming a little late on this one if they wanted to contest, but I think they were willing just to take the tower in the top lane, reset, and then look to start CSing again. Because some of those CS numbers have looked a little bit weak because of how we've had so much skirmishing. You can see like only eight a minute on Xmati and on Unforgiven. Uh, Magic Felix, unsurprisingly, has been farming up incredibly well on this Twisted Fate. 105 CS so far. That Rod of Age is now stacking up. And we kind of move now, Trouble, from this incredibly intense first 10 minutes of the game. Like, I'm losing my breath a little bit how much we've had to talk <laughs> into a portion of the game that's likely to be a little bit slower. And I'm starting to wonder, like, how these chess pieces are going to get shuffled around the board to try and maximize these compositions for each team. I'd say the problem right here is that because Monster have fallen behind right now, Fnatic are on the timer for all the neutral objectives, right? They want to move in into the into the bot uh, side river to get the dragons to try and get as close to Soul as possible and then try to force Monster out of the hiding spot and then brute force a fight on them. Magic Felix can also play the side lane. He won't have a match at this point because he's that much fed. Sebex though. Oh, he's going to shuffle Dan and Magic Felix back. Dan uses the Stormbringer to get across the wall, and Sebex might just be dead. Dan, so much damage on this Volley Bear. That's the reason he is first pick worthy. And uh, Max Lord about to realize that you can't jump into a bear and get away with it. However, there's a lockup in the bottom lane. Destiny coming out. Unforgiven uses the cleanse early. The Zenith coming out as well as X. Maddie's going to fall first, but I'm not sure Unforgiven can survive this one. Magic Felix gets the final auto, and Heaver's going to have to try and run for the wins. Flashes over the wall. Dan's on the chase. You don't have the Stormbringer to disable the tower, so Eva will just be able to get to safety underneath the tower. I, I, I cannot get behind what Monster is doing right now. They're basically throwing away what little win conditions they have left. They're basically giving kills away to Fnatic, and Fnatic are more than happy to take them and leave, you know? They want this game more than they want anything, uh, you know, from this group. Monster is the one that's right behind them looking to take the first place from them. And Monster's like, it's fine. You can just take it from us. I mean, we talked about how Sebex is so far behind from Magic Felix. He has what? Half an item completed? Magic oh, Felix has two. One scaling Rod of Ages and an Hourglass. And then he pulls that play? 
he wants to engage while not knowing where Danny's will get what. Both Dan and Magi Felix are much stronger than their counterpart, and they showed it right here. They completely dismantled Monster, and then Magi Felix is like, you know what? I still have ultimate. Why don't I just go down the bot lane and then finish some more? It's just uh, over eagerness, I think, for Monster. Like they have real power in this Draven right now. Like he's incredibly strong, stacking up his passive. He got the uh, shutdown on the Callista earlier on, so he's actually still ahead in gold overall, but. The issue is when a Twisted Fate can just join the fray, basically at a moment's notice, you're in such a difficult position. Magic Felix coming down here, the Solar Fire doesn't miss, doesn't hit as he was able to dodge to the side and hit the TP. Monster Rugby Gaming aren't done with the fight yet. You can see so much damage coming down from Unforgiven as next Maddie's gonna get hit on the back, but Stebex isn't able to get the shuffle in in time. Stunned immediately, Magic Felix gonna jump in with a stun card. And here comes Pride, Hemo Plague will cost Unforgiven his life. Max Maxmore goes down as well. And I called it over at the four minute mark. Well, now it feels like it's really sh slipping away from Monster Rugby Gaming. This is an absolute fiesta from Monster Rugby Gaming. When I saw the teleport on bot, oh my God, I thought it was to carry and it was Sebex from the mid lane. They keep on taking fights. They cannot win. Your Draven is almost at the infinity edge. Finish that and then repeatedly hit X Mati across the face. I get that, but without any items on your Azir, any items onto Maxla apart from his jungle one, and no Trinity Force yet onto your Gangplank in the top lane, what are you fighting for? Party Felix is so confident, he just bought a Magi. <laughs> That's the swag book right He's not there. Dying He's like, today, like, many. I've got I've got six names in my death note. How many more am I gonna put in before this game ends? We have passed the 15 minute mark and Monster Rugby Gaming here have elected to play on. The FF has not come out, and here comes the destiny. It's Unforgiven's gonna get locked up on the backside of this fight. Stunned immediately. Imagine Felix just shreds through him. Unforgiven's dead. Your Draven is dead. X Maddie is trading against Shikari, losing it out, but it doesn't really matter because the rest of his team is just demolishing Monster Rugby Gaming. This is, uh, oh, x Maddie even kiting Shikari out. This is an ace. This is an ace. Magic Felix on the chase. Pops the blue card and pops the life of Shikari. No oh, hope happy. now for Munster. The Rift Herald goes down and uh, it's all done, but the singing here trouble. Um, I was looking for a Baron. I'm like, is, is Baron up yet? Can I like, <laughs> spin up the process, take these towers and finish the game already? Because it's so frustrating just with this monster coming up. We know Fnatic. I, I know I'm not talking much about Fnatic, but we know how dominant they can be, how decisive they'll take the lead. They will just snowball the lead. They don't care about anything. And even though I highlighted Dan, Dan has been nearly, you know, in the backline of everything. It's been everyone else diving in there, you know, Pride, Magic Felix, X Mati. It's been action all over the place. And Monster are handing in themselves like lambs to sacrifice at this point. They know they can't take the fight. They do take them and they end up losing more and more. At this point, what is through your head if you're Monster? What, what, what is the breaking point that you're like, okay, <laughs> right now I want to fight? Because let me tell you what, it, it will not get any better with a Vladimir flanking, with a Volibear being so beefy, with Magic Felix having already 25 stats on his Magi. It does not get better. It really doesn't. Like, Fnatic is showing us why they are not only the champions elect of this group, but also a clear favorite to win the NLC and go to EU Masters. Uh, looks like we just had a, uh, a, a quick pause and it will be rectified in just a second. I'm going to ask our observer, can we just uh, can we just see what Twisted Fate's AP is right now? Because I'm pretty sure he's going to be 330. Okay, so he's in a pretty strong position uh, with the seven stacked Rod of Ages. He's uh, he's pretty powerful. The Sheen Fox is going to hurt quite a lot as the fight goes on. 330. Uh, 17 minutes in, casually. That's all right. Yeah, casually. I mean, uh, Sebex has finished his Nash's tooth now, though. So he's probably hey. sitting, you know, like 120. <laughs> He's uh, struggling a little bit. Face call gonna come in from X Maddie, and here's the destiny once again. Unforgiven stunned up, will cleanse, but there's the solar flare. He even does a good job of body blocking, but he might be the first on the menu. Maxwell's gonna come in from the side as well, using that blast going to get across. Sebex here as well. Don't go in, don't go in, don't do it. I've had enough chicken for one day. I don't I mean, need he has another an one item. diving in. I mean, he's got, a, yeah, he's got one whole <laughs> item. Dear God. He's, he's like, he's probably got less gold than the supports right now. Oh, then, uh, then Bravado. Okay, 600 more gold than Bravado. Half as much gold as Magic Felix. Half, like, what? 
see. I just, oh, that's disgusting. Zebex has been praised for how consistent he is in the mid lane, no matter how Monster is doing in the game, whether they're doing bad or whether they're doing good. I can't say the same about him in this one. I think he's had a very, very poor performance. And now you'll see the problem with all these towers going down when the Azir is trying to push a lane, when the Draven is trying to catch a wave and get some gold. Fnatic's just gonna pull the trigger over and over again. Look at them. They just want something. They're done. Baron is not even up. They, they want Baron 15 minutes in. Please, someone. Production? Yeah, just, just spawn it for us now. So that this, uh, this can be done quicker. 22 kills to five, 9,000 gold lead here for Fnatic. Someone we can praise as Fnatic start to push in for this first inhibitor of the game is Pride. Uh, that we heard on the analyst death, like he has been a weak point for Fnatic Rising. He has struggled. And uh, with the Ritter dead, I'm pretty sure Fnatic won't push in anymore. But he's actually had a really good game this game. A lot of that has been he's been in the skirmishes. In a, in a, uh, at a really good time. He's uh, He's been able to TP down there. He got a couple of good kills, but also he's held Shikari at bay and... Uh-oh. Zebex. Okay, Magic Felix is... You, you don't really want to dive a tower against an Azir, even if it's just a Sun Disc. What if you but, have uh, friends? I think he gets... Oh, he stopped the back. He stopped the back. Zebex, put up your walls. Pray to the Shurima gods or something. Bring Skarno in for the fight, because right now you are done for. That is, uh... You know what? Yeah. I, I was just about to say, it's so good because all these times, Sebex has been on the side lane, getting farm. And it's actually pretty good that the mid lane inhibitor went down because that means the whole, that uh, Unforgiven can sit in mid lane or Sebex and just have all these minions funneled into the base without him having to overstep and get punished for it. So that would be that, a way that yep. they can funnel some more items into their inventories, but... I don't know, man. Yeah. It, it, this is not happening. It's like it's quite a, like a common thing that you hear talked about, which is like you don't want to go for too early an inhibitor. But the problem is, Fnatic can just chase you down. Like Heber is dead. Bravado is in Baron Pit with four members of oh. Munster and uh, three members of Munster and still alive. He gets kicked out with a fate call. And like Munster, I give you credit, you tried something. You tried a sneaky little play. You thought maybe we can do a Fnatic bush against Fnatic. But we're 20 minutes in. You are 22 kills down. You are 9,000 gold in the hole. And there are 25 stacks on Magic Felix's Magi's. Don't, you other don't other win items. these. You don't win these. Yeah, he only has like four items completed versus the Nash's Tooth of Sebex. And talking about Sebex, I'm not sure how much longer he can stay alive here. Yeah, Magic Phoenix has flash. Okay, oh. there's the stuff. Here comes Heaver. I say that as if he can have a meaningful <laughs> impact on this fight. Barrier from Magic Felix. Okay, they've done 200 damage to him. Magic Felix I is still locked up here. TP in. Oh, he's been exhausted. Magic, what? <laughs> Leave him. Fnatic, go away, go away. Let Magic Felix do this. Shikari gets stunned up. Unforgiven. Okay, get some damage onto Dan. There's the Whirling Death as well. The cleanse immediately away. The Zenith Blade doesn't hit, but here's Magic Felix once again. He's joined the back of the fight. Oh, Unforgiven. Oh, the Wait. stopwatch is going to stop him in his tracks. Ex Maddie gets the kill, Pride gets another, Unforgiven's gonna oh. kill Magic Phoenix, has the big shutdown, but can he survive for long enough to actually use that gold? Or will their base just be in tattered by the time it matters? Unforgiven here, clearing out the minions. Good job, mate. Get those CS numbers up. At least one thing will be in your favor for this game. Solar Flare comes out. Sebex is killed by the power of the sun. One before. And Unforgiven, he's not Magic Felix. That's all I can say out of that one. Wait, why? Did Magic feel it's just one before when I didn't see him, Magic? Because all <laughs> Fnatic ran to his end, okay? He didn't, he didn't want before. I wanted to see it. I think he wanted it because he didn't want to back off. And uh, it just bothers me so much because you see Unforgiven and the damage he's able to pour out on that Draven. And he just hasn't been given the chance. I can't necessarily point my finger to one member of Monster that did something wrong or one member of Fnatic because I feel like it's been collectively bad from the side of Monster where decision making is concerned and collectively great for Fnatic on where they pulled the trigger and how they used their lead because they didn't necessarily throw themselves at Monster. They were taking what was given to them and then they multiplied that. Yeah, they just did such a good job of uh, letting Munster int into them. I think it was uh, very well done from Fnatic. I will say the one thing I would mention is they kind of got a bit bloodthirsty over the last couple of minutes. They've had a Baron. They haven't really done a huge amount with it uh, because they were, you know, fighting over Magic Felix and then 
constantly fighting in the bottom lane. I don't even think they got a, a tower out of it so far. They, they've got 40 seconds left on it, so they can break the top tier one and probably the top tier two. But perhaps they could have gained just a little bit more if they weren't chasing for the kills. And perhaps Magic Felix would still have 25 pages in his Magis. It's Maddie's going to trade him onto Max Lord. Here's the Destiny as they look for the fight once again. And Unforgiven is... Well, he's uh, dead. Wait. That's uh, oh. pretty much all you can say. Pride goes legendary. Sebex goes away, but the Fate's Call will chase him down. And Bird is not the word here for Monster Rugby Game. I can tell you're not excited about this fight. <laughs> like, the, the problem is at this point, it's like, cool, you did you did the same thing you've done for a while. That was good. Oh, wait, wait, double wait, storm bring oh, good double Stormbringer. Oh, good double Stormbringer. You built two arm wreckers at the same Come time. Come on, Look, give it to me, give it to me. Fnatic, Fnatic are amazing. They dominated this game. The inhibitor respawns. Monster Rugby Gaming have a chance. Can they take the inhibitor down in time? Fnatic trying to get it in time, but here come the resets. Unforgiven up in one. Step X up in 11. Shikari up in 33. Man, Fnatic should still just be able to close out the game, but who knows? Monster Rugby Gaming could be doing something incredibly exciting here. Fnatic are going for the fight. They're looking for the kills. They're looking for the next. Can they do it? Of course, they flipping can. Fnatic with a dominant performance take down Monster Rugby Gaming. That was absolutely beautiful, Medic. I mean, for that, Fnatic, you did something great too. But Medic, I have to give you, I have oh, to give you the, the crown for, for the last bit. I mean, what can we say? We expected dominance. We got dominance. Yeah. What we weren't expecting was Monster to be so extremely sloppy. For me, they had won the draft. They got a, had a great idea on what to do when they got in. Feed money into your Draven. The other you know, top of the uh, top of the table will just beat themselves by just getting some in scale into the late game. And it just, it just all disappeared. Level one. What was it? 3-0 yeah. Kalista? 2-0 Kalista? A 2-0 Kalista. Then you got three kills at the four level four fight and Magic Felix got oh, a kill. It was six. just... Minute six. Right. Uh, five and oh. Yeah. It was... It was a lesson in how to snowball an advantage from Fnatic. That is what I'll say. They look incredible. It was great to watch them. And we're going to be back with our next game of the day just after this break. Make sure you don't go anywhere. There's more exciting leagues to come.
Well, uh, that was that was pretty one-sided for now. Um, kind of had it felt to me like that game was won from about two minutes in. I it was a roller coaster to be in a call with Orcs while he was watching that game. <laughs> Orcs, you want to talk me through your emotions right now? Um, well, I've had a lot of time to deal with it because obviously the game was over at about the ten minute mark, and uh, well, I mean, some would say even sooner. It was just. A, a wild one. I mean, I have so many questions. The invade at the start, the looking to skirmish around the Clista. I mean, at what point do you go, right, okay, Clista's got five kills. We can still take it. We can still take it. No, it doesn't work. It was just... Months look lost. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Months look lost. I don't know what they're doing anymore. Their play style isn't working. They came into this being like academy killers. Not, not even. And I know Fnatic are good, but honestly, that was something else. I, look, I, I'm going to straight up say it, Dan. It was pathetic. Like it was. It was a pathetic game. Like I, I, I don't, I don't. I, look, I, I love the guys on the on the roster. I think the team is brilliant. But get stop level one invading, especially versus the twisted fate. Come on, it doesn't. It doesn't take a, a genius to figure out that there's not going to be. Even though you've got Nautilus, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that level one's going to be tough to win. Like, don't like run it down bot lane over and over again when Matty's starting the game with three kills. <laughs> like it's, there was just, there was just, I feel like at some point Monster would just turn around and said, well, we've lost this anyway. So let's just like go for every skirmish physically possible. Look, I, I was disappointed because that should have been one of the, the, the most entertaining and closest matches of our entire group. And it was just, a, it was like the quickest game we've had this season. I mean, Fnatic I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just completely got in there. No, I mean, Fnatic dispatched them like they would have dispatched Eminem. And that's saying something, you know? Completely. And uh, to be fair, I wanted to give Fnatic praise here, but it's just so hard when Monster is just running it down like this, right? We spoke to Heva last time they beat Eminem. He was like, that game should not have been this close. We got EU Masters in our sight. That's what we're together for. Mate, you're looking at not even making playoffs if you keep going on like this. So Monster Rugby Gaming needs to make something happen. But still, I think we can solidify Fnatic as the best team in that group. My, maybe Great. even the league here. Oh, absolutely the league. It was an incredibly quick game, but there was a lot of blood and there was a lot of fighting. And we let Orcs break down one of those fights in particular for his play of the match. Orcs, over to you. Yeah, so I actually think this one's super hype because I saw Munster having an opportunity to get back into the game. And the person I want you to focus on in this play is going to be Sebex on the Azir. And uh, hopefully it gets rolling in a second. Here there we go. So we're looking at Sebex here because we have this close quarters fight in quite a tight spot in this situation. You can see Munster actually pretty in a, in a decent position to kite the... But Unforgiven gets a lot of damage out from his ultimate in this situation, but you want to look towards Sebex coming in now, and that could have been the game-changing play with the Shreema Shuffle, but a beautiful stun coming out from Magic Felix just shut it down, and it's just that sort of high-level play that comes out from Fnatic that just meant really Munster had no way of getting in, because I think that was a good setup for a fight. It was the right scenario for Munster to find a window, but the execution for Fnatic is just on another level. Fnatic firing on all cylinders remaining undefeated and we actually have their top liner top laner standing by for an interview so pride can you hear me how you doing mate you're right yeah i can hear you yeah, yeah that was a fun game for the top laner <laughs> top lane all the action was breaking out elsewhere and you just have a bit of a farm fest talk to me about that game because I, we we built up this big storyline we were like man this is potentially a team who we built up to be the, the uh you know these LEC sister team slayers, and you dispatched them so, so easy. I mean, Did you expect honest, it to be that easy? Just... Sorry? Did you expect it to be that easy? I, I didn't expect it to be that easy, to be honest, but um, I feel like with the nature of both drafts, it's just whoever wins in the early game, wins the game. And obviously we got that, uh, we took the win on the invade, and I feel like their draft has to co continue committing on the Draven side. So even though Kalista is super ahead, they have to keep trying to do something on the Kalista. And obviously that backfired a lot as well. Uh, I think once they actually managed to kill the Kalista and got a big shot down, but we weren't too worried. We had also like strong solo laners. So I do think the draft uh, or like the game was mostly decided on invade, but I also feel comfortable in the draft. Yeah, with that invade as well, it felt like you guys kind of knew that was coming. Uh, I was talking to Orcs off off air while we were watching the game, and he said this is something for it's it's months for keep doing that. They keep going for these level one invades. It looked like you guys were ready. Were you prepared for this early invade? Did you just have that play ready to go? We actually wanted to invade ourselves on their bot side, 
but then we saw them walk into our bot side and we had a really good bard that spotted all five of them on our blue buff. So we just played it slow, got some TF red cards down, and then we just won the fight. I mean, yeah, we did know that they were going to try to invade. I mean, they do have an Olaf after all, and they want to split the map. Uh, in this case, they wanted to split the map for the Draven side, but unfortunately for them, we saw it coming and it yeah. backfired. And so obviously you guys you guys looking very dominant in the league. I think there's there's no there's no arguing that an undefeated spree. You may even have an undefeated just regular season at this rate. Um your attention is probably now shifting towards the European Masters. And I want to talk a little bit about the kind of broader picture here. Are there any teams in the other ERLs that you're now you've now started to kind of get your sights on and hone your focus on? Are there any teams that maybe starting to, you know, Cause a bit of worry for you guys, or are you still just more focused on the NLC and what's going on at the moment? I mean, we are focused on new masters. We've always been. We always practice for that. Um, there's no particular team that we have in mind right now for new masters. I think it's a bit too early for that. Um, we are mostly just working on ourselves and trying to play different styles and just growing as a team. And I think we we have shown that we can like play different styles. For example, scaling or early game very well and. We're just going to keep working on, it, working on ourselves. Um, I think that's probably the best ap approach to getting to your masters. So shifting that towards, that's a similar question, over towards Group A. Are there any teams that you think are going to pose a threat once we get towards playoffs over from Group A? Or do you guys think that this is, this is just an easy running of a tournament? I mean, it's going to be Excel for sure. They are yeah. the strongest team in that group. Um, it's, it's the long lasting rivalry between Fnatic and Excel. So we're going to look to smash them again in the finals, just like last time. Awesome. Well, congratulations on your win, Pride, and thank you for joining us here for this thank interview. You I'll much, let man. you. I'll let you go now and uh, thank you. Enjoy yourself after that win. And guys, I mean, it's not really much too more to break down on that game. It was just a very, very one-sided affair. You we are going to what? <laughs> no, I was just like smashed. It was a good reverse sweep, but I like the spice coming in from it. No, no, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of want to just say, I, I think even just given the way that XL have been playing regular season, although they have been saying it's been more scrim-like and they're just experimenting. I, I don't even think it's close. I think Fnatic absolutely stomps them. I, I genuinely do. Just 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 with the current form of both of those teams, I, I'm, I'm happy to go out and say that. And I'm the biggest XL fanboy in the room. So I, is, I think, yeah. you know, you know, I, I genuinely think, feel it's the case. Fnatic look head and shoulders above the competition right now. And I think that makes it really interesting in Group A because now you have a situation where Fnatic are pulling ahead significantly, still undefeated, looking towards that number one spot. Whoever comes number two in the in Group A is going to have to go against Fnatic round one. So, I mean, we're seeing a match later today between Nordavind and XL. That one's going to be super high because they'll lock in playoffs. They'll potentially set the head-to-head -head between them and also have a chance to pull ahead in the group. And then whoever's less than second facing Fnatic is not going to be a fun time. We can analyze all we want before playoffs, but reality is everything changes when you get to playoffs. Last time it was XL undefeated into playoffs. Wow, they're looking like the most dominant team in the league. And what do you know? Reverse sweep coming in there. So nothing is certain yet, but I do agree Fnatic are looking like the best team in the league right now. Not looking great, but there's still way more games to come here at the NLC. We're going to cut to a quick break. And when we're back, we're back with game number three, Ents versus Team Singularity. We'll see you in a second.